<clears throat> Hello, everyone. NB Geeks, NB Geeks, let's talk. 10 forward. How is everybody doing? I hope you are having a fun Saturday. And, well, hopefully we can do this video here if my computer will stop locking up on me for reasons. All right, folks. We're going to talk Spider-Man No Way Home. This is a spoiler review. And, I mean, the biggest thing is... I'm sure most of you know, you probably found out if you didn't get to. Um, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield reprised their roles as Spider-Mans from their specific universes. So let's kind of go into what happened. I'm going to go over general story, this general story layout, and then I'm going to go over uh, my thoughts on the whole interact on the whole thing. So Mysterio, you know, is framed Parker for murder and identified him as Spider-Man. Movie starts out J. Jonah Jameson, um, always played great by. Um, uh, now I can't think of his damn name. I'm going to go down here. I cannot believe that. Isn't that always the way it goes? Uh, son of a gun. Come on. J.K. Simmons. Yeah. I don't know why I was having a brain fart on that. Reveals he's Spider Man. So now you got Spider-Man and MJ. You know, he's trying to crawl around. He's getting around things. He's trying to deal with this. Uh, damage control comes over. And basically fine. Basically takes them all down for interrogation. Ned, Aunt May, Peter, MJ. And they're trying to file, see about filing charges against them. Uh after they play a little intimidation game with them, they're back at home. Turns out their lawyer, Matt Murdock, gets the charges dropped. And there's a very nice scene where somebody threw a rock through there and Daredevil grabs it. <laughs> Peter's like, how'd you do that? I'm a really good lawyer. They decide all the kids are applying at different schools. The big one they want to go to is MIT. And because they all know Spider-Man as Peter Parker and Peter Parker is known as Spider-Man, they have refused to allow them application into the school. Peter decides to go talk to Dr. Strange, see about doing a forget spell. Um, Wong's just like, leave me out of this one. So they go down to the, they go down to the area Sanctum area, and while Doctor Strange is doing the spell, of course, <clears throat> Parker starts changing a few things in it, and this really becomes annoying to Doctor Strange. And then he has to collapse the the spell in on itself and contain it, not knowing exactly what they did. Uh, he's not very he's very unhappy with uh, Parker. He's like. You didn't even call the school before you had me trying to do a spell to erase everything. This is where I had a little bit of a flaw with this movie. And like, okay, wouldn't it have made more sense for Doctor Strange to uh, sit down with Parker and talk about what, you know, how the spell would work? But seriously, this is... Um, Dr. Strange, we're talking about, he is similar to Tony Stark, as in they're both narcissists. Also, you have this massive age difference between Dr. Strange and Parker. Parker's still a 17-year-old kid, and even Strange has to admit he doesn't know that. He, he sometimes forgets that. So, <clears throat> uh, Holland goes up to Tom Holland. Spider-Man goes up. Uh, Goes onto the bridge in, in New York, uh, finds the MIT person and wants to talk to her. And this is when everything starts going. This is when Dr. Octopus shows up. They have a fight. And actually, he holds his own. The funny thing is, uh, Otto Octavia takes his uh, nanotech and actually gets it plugged into his, uh, his tentacles. And now... Spider-Man has control. You get a scene with Norman Osborn where he basically is flying around on his little glider. They get back. They 
eventually end up back at Strange's place. Strange captures Octavia, places him in a holding cell, and turns out Dr. Connors, who's Lizard, is actually there too. Strange explains this pulled people from uh, the multiverse, a thing they don't know much about. They start catching these people, bringing them back, putting them in, in well, basically these cells. So you get Mysterio, I keep saying Mysterio, Electro, Lizard, Sandman, Dr. Ock, and Norman, and uh, Green Goblin. And they're all from different eras of the timeline, too. You can basically say, you can basically infringe, um, they're all from the year of the movie that when the one came out. Because Otto knows that um, Otto knows got the goblin's dead, and then Sandman knows that Otto Octavia's dead. And then I can't remember if they knew if Electro died or not. And then uh, he goes, oh, I think he killed me. So that was probably towards the end of that episode. They run into an issue. Basically, uh, Doctor Strange wants to use his device, this magician, magician thing, send them all back to their places. And the whole thing is, though, most of their fates are all, they're all going to die in their timelines. And Peter can't uh, handle that. So he goes into, he takes the, uh, he takes the uh, MacGuffin, I'm going to call it that. And then goes out and they go through the mirror universe. Spidey wins out on this one. He actually takes care of Dr. Con or Dr. Octavia's uh, piece back there. And as they're trying to basically cure them, what, they, what they're doing is they're trying to cure the powers that they have or whatever issue they have. So when they go back to their own timelines, it won't necessarily mean their fates. And then, of course, the Green Goblin doesn't want to give up his powers. He, he comes back into his mindset where his Green Goblin personality. Uh, Electro does not want to give up his powers at all. Sandman just wants to get back to his family. Lizard, he kind of doesn't really have much of a role in this. So it is what it is. So they're at Happy's place and things go bad. There's a whole big fight out between with the villains and uh, Spider-Man. Most of them all leave the area except for Green Goblin. Well, Green Goblin, uh, you know, pretty much they destroy the built, they destroy the apartment and everything. And uh, Aunt May gets impaled by the glider. And she gives him the great power comes great responsibility thing. We don't realize she's hurt until, you know, she's dead in his arms. And that's really where the pain starts right there. He's angry. He's upset. You know, kind of that transition we saw with our other two Spider-Man. We had seen that that kind of thing in, in them before. But this was when it, it hits. You know, now this hits him. As they're going in and getting at. You know, so Spider-Man runs off. He's, you know, trying to deal with what's going on with the death and everything. And the cops actually shot at him. Now, he goes under a rooftop. And what happens is Ned, who has actually got the one of the sorcerer's things from Doctor Strange, is actually able to open portals. So he's going to find Peter Parker. And then you find Spider-Man. And it's... Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. And there's this little banner that's like, prove your Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, MJ throws bread, and he, like, stands up on top. Uh, you know, he just kind of sits up here, and then the abuela's like, uh, can you just go go over there and get that cobweb? So that was fun. And then he Ned does it again, and then Tobey Maguire comes out. And, you know, he's kind of got that very uh, nice older look, but he he seems like he's the the elder statesman of it, I think would be the right word. So they all meet up on the rooftop. They all they all kind of try to figure out where Peter would go. Uh, it turned out for Toby, it was the Empire State Building. For Garfield, it was the Chrysler Building. So they figure out where he is. He sits there, and you know Ned and 
and MJ go through and, you know, see him. We get our two Spider-Men that come down and, you know, he's, you know, he's racking himself with guilt for this. So Holland is racking himself with guilt and the, you know, Andrew Garfield uh, talks about the death of Gwen Stacy and how he couldn't save her. Uh, Toby talks about how, you know, it was his fault Uncle Ben died and he found the man he thought did it and it didn't change anything. So they start to work together and eventually they start talking, getting together. You know, they're trying to teach him. And then, you know, he says with great power, Holland says with great power. And then they both go by basically comes great response. And they're like, who said that to you? And they're like, they both said Uncle Ben on the day they died, on the day he died. So it kind of almost mirrors up to that with uh, this being this being Aunt May saying it and um, on the day she died. So the Spider-Men get together. They try to get all the villains up there to cure them and then send them back to their own realms. And <clears throat> after that, long story short, you get a big battle. They realize they have some talk back and forth between each other. Uh, and it's really nice how there's a lot of talk in different areas. Uh, Ned at one point asks, you know, uh, McGuire, did you have, do you have a best friend? He goes, yeah, I did. And he mentions, you know, what happened? He goes, died in my arms uh, shortly after he was trying to kill me. Now, referring to um, Harry Osborn. Uh, there's a battle going on. They eventually start learning to work as a team. Uh, Holland's actually shocked they've never heard of the Avengers before. Uh, but anyway, there's a really great scene, especially when MJ is falling and Holland is trying to save her and he gets hit with the glider. And then you just see the reaction on uh, Garfield's face and, you know, the way he flies down, saves MJ. And then you just see the look on his face. It's like, really, he did. He really came back into it. They eventually heal everyone. Uh, these characters actually get to have some talk, especially with Dr. Octopus and um, Toby. And then, of course, with Electro and uh, Andrew Garfield. So there's some really good dialect and everything going on between there. So overall, this was, this was a solid, great movie. A lot of action, a lot of heart, a little bit of tragedy. And uh, one of the things was I really like how they did the, uh, these characters. They, they weren't goofy. They didn't disrespect them. Holland was great. Garfield was great. You know, they, they really got into some of the fun. And there was, there was a little Easter eggs and banter. He's like, you know, Holland says, I'm lame. He goes, no, no, no. Toby's like, no, no, no. You're amazing. Amazing. I mean, it, you could see the fun references people were, you know, comparing to when they were talking about things from the movies they did. They kept it within canon. You know, even um, Garfield and McGuire, you know, he's talking about, do you have somebody? He goes, that's a little complicated. And you know, he's talking about MJ. And he says, yeah, we've worked it out <clears throat> for the most part. Um. Garfield, I guess, after, you know, he he said, you know, he's like, after what happened with um, with Gwen Stacy, you know, he let his rage and his anger get into him. He stopped pulling his punches. I mean, there was a real lot of, I, I honestly, I thought it was very interesting because it seems like between those two in this movie here, with Tom, they, they are helping him, they're helping Holland to become the Spider-Man that they became, which ultimately Spider-Man is born out of tragedy. I mean, the spot when you really think about Spider-Man is born out of tragedy. And they they are there with him. Uh, Holland wants to kill the goblin and almost does. And it's uh, Tobey Maguire who stops him. They have a they have a wonderful embrace afterwards. They talk. And for some reason, they decide to do the memory spell where everybody forgets who Peter is. I didn't quite understand that part. Why? Does everyone need to forget Peter Parker, period, and not forget just that he's Spider-Man? Because you see him have a, a GED equivalent test, so that means everything about him has been erased. Uh, that just, huh. That, that, that one, that was really one of my key issues there, was I just don't know how that spell really worked that way, how all that's going to play out. Uh, we'll see in the future. Uh you got to believe there's going to be more Spider-Man in some way, shape, or form. All right, folks. 
that was my spoiler review. I love the chemistry between the actors. I thought they all did an amazing job, pun intended. I think uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire's character got uh, got a completion arc even. I mean, all the way through, got a completion arc uh, from their last movies. And Garfield uh, was not my favorite Peter Parker, but, you know, the way he was doing it, when, when we actually see them all together, it's kind of fun to see this because they don't have to be exactly the same. The core of Spider-Man, the core of Peter Parker is what they are, and that is to help people. You know, they've gone through tragedy. They've all got something together. So whether it be which one is three, it's really the chemistry they had, I, I thought was fantastic. They could have easily have screwed all this up and made a, a shitty movie and just made a joke out of uh, out of Garfield or Maguire, but they didn't. They showed them respect. Great movie. Had a lot of fun. I give it about, I give it an eight. Easy. All right, folks. Spoiler review of Spider-Man No Way Home in under 17 minutes.